Right, hello. So I'm going to be going through um, some of these topic tests. The first one here is on further equations and graphs. So question one. To teach asset class to write a question that combines algebra and geometry, this is Shanna's question. Hexagon as angle is 5x, 5x, 4x, 3x, 2x and x. Work out the value of x. The first thing we want to do is solve the question. So, um, first thing we need to know is well, what are the total angles in a hexagon? So you might know this formula. Um, so for any n-sided shape, this is how you find the total angles. So if you're doing 180 times by 6 minus 4, because it's a hexagon. Sorry, 6 minus 2, which is 4. So 180 minus 4 is 720. So we know in total all of these angles have got to add up to 720 degrees. So 5x plus 5x plus 4x. Whoops plus 3x, plus 2x, plus x have to equal 720. So I make that 10, 14, uh, 17, 19, 20. So 20x 20 equals 720. So x will be 720 divided by 20, which is 36 degrees. So x is 36. Okay. Right, so part B, comment on the solution and Shanna's question. So I think this is a really strange question for them to ask you. Um, if we think about what's going on, well, if we think, so this is a hexagon and it's got these different angles where X is 36. So let's think about what these angles would be. So 5 times 36 is 180. This is 180. Uh, 4 times 36 is... 144, 3 times 36 is 108, 72 and 36. Now try and think what's wrong with that. So hopefully you've noticed that if you've got angles of 180 degrees, then that's not actually going to really be an angle at all, it's just going to be carrying on the straight line. Um, so I think all they want you to really say is... Um, well, it wouldn't be a hexagon, it would be a quadrilateral because two of the angles are 180 degrees. So have a look in the mark scheme for that. It's, it's only one mark. So yeah, I wouldn't expect to get a question that vague in an exam. Anyway, right, question two. Here are four graphs, A, B, C and D. So they all look like straight lines. Use this graph to write down the answers to the following problems. So 2A, I think of a number, I multiply it by 2 and subtract 1. The answer is 4. What number did I think of? So there's a couple of ways of doing this. So you might you might think, well, I could just make an equation out of this. So 2x minus 1, so double a number. So let's call the number x. So we'd have 2x subtract 1. So we've got 2x minus 1, and that's to equal 4. And then you could solve it. You could say, well, 2x equals 5. x equals 2.5. But what they're really asking you to do is to use the graphs we had originally. So let's think about what's going on. I multiply a number by 2 and subtract 1. Do any of these equations do that? So we can see here, one of them is y equals 2x minus 1. So that's graph A. So we could look at, well, where's the point where this graph, we want it to equal 4. So we want the y value to be 4. So that would be here. And then we can see that hits the graph at 2.5. So we'd get the same answer doing that. So really... They want you to use the graphs to do that. Okay, 2b. The sum of two numbers is 6. The difference of the two numbers is 3. What are the two numbers? Okay. Right, now, if we imagine we've got two numbers, x and y, so we want them to add up to 6. Well, here we've got x plus y equals 6. And also, the difference between them is 3. And if you look here, this is the equation where the y value is the x value, take away 3. So the difference would be 3. So we could have done this by making up these simultaneous equations and then solving them. But hopefully we should look, the answer to this should be where the graphs b and c meet. So let's find out where that is. So that will be this point here. So I reckon that is at... 4.5 and then on the y-axis 1.5 which would make sense so if you think about these two numbers 
4.5 is 3 more than 1.5, and if you add them together, you get 6. So it is a bit easier with the graph. Okay, finally, sorry, not finally, we've got 3 minus 4x equals 0. So we've got to look for something to do with 3 minus 4x up here. Right. So we can see we've got, I can see a 4x and a 3 here. So if we try and get what we had there, well, 2y would equal 3 minus 4x. And we want 3 minus 4x to equal 0. So in other words, we want 2y to equal 0. So what we want to look for is, well, when does this line hit 0? So that's graph D. So if we look at that, we can see it will hit 0. That looks to me somewhere between 0 and 1. So I'd say about 3 quarters. Obviously, you can't really tell from there. In fact, I think this is one where it's a bit easier to solve the equation itself. So if 3 minus 4x equals 0, then 4x equals 3. So x would equal 3 divided by 4, or 3 quarters. That's a bit of a strange one for them to give you, really. But really, with this whole question, what they're trying to get you to show is your understanding of inputs and outputs on graphs, as well as um, things like what do simultaneous equations mean in terms of the graphs and things like that. Okay, part D, when does 2x minus 6 equal 3 minus 4x? Okay. Right, so here's our 3 minus 4x again, and we somehow want a 2x minus 6. Now we've got an x minus 3 here, which is equivalent, really. Sorry, not equivalent. Um, it's half of 2x minus 6. So if we doubled this equation, we'd have 2y equals 2x minus 6. And again, if we rearrange this, we'd have 2y equals 3 minus 4x. So if we find where these meet, that will give us the x-coordinate, and it will give us double the y-coordinate. So we want where c and d meet which is down here, it looks like 1.5 minus 1.5. Okay, so this is actually, I think, double our y-coordinate. Well, actually, we're not interested in the y-coordinate. All we're interested in is um, where these, what x-value these meet at, which we can see is 1.5. So once again, with all of these a, b, c, and d, you can solve them all algebraically without graphs, but they're trying to get you to show you understand the graphs. Okay, but obviously they can't stop you solving it algebraically in the exam. Right, question three. The sketch shows the graph of y equals 2x plus 2 and y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. Work out the x coordinates of s and t. So again, as is kind of a theme with all this equations and graphs, you've got to think, well, how do I find these coordinates, the x coordinates of s and t? Well, you have to solve these equations simultaneously. So what have we got? y equals 2x plus 2, and y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. So you've got to think, right, well, I know these are, um, one is a quadratic, so you're going to have to do this by substitution. So you always want to sub the simpler one into the more complicated one. So I'm going to, wherever I see a y on the right-hand equation, I'm just going to write 2x plus 2. So in other words, 2x plus 2 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. So if we bring it, so because this is a quadratic we need to solve, we'll shove everything over to the left. So we get 2x squared plus x minus 6. So you've got a few options on how to solve it. I reckon that one might factorise. So you might have been through different ways of how you can factorise these. So we want a plus x. Would that do it? 2x squared minus 4x plus 3x. So we want the signs the other way around, I reckon. So that would be 2x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 6. You might have other ways of doing this using grids or using an algorithm, and that's fine. 
So that would give us, so if that equals 0, then 2x minus 3 will equal 0. So x will be 1.5 or 3 over 2, or x equals minus 2. So we can see the two x coordinates then will be minus 2 and 1.5. Right, question four. Here are four attempts to solve the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero using the quadratic formula. They've all been partially evaluated, so they've been done a bit of working out. Um, three of the attempts have been correctly partially evaluated. One of the attempts is wrong. Circle the letter of the wrong attempt below. So this is a pretty um, weird question. So if we think about what the quadratic formula looks like, so you need to know this by heart, remember, for your test. Okay, so we've got minus b on the outside, so 8 minus 6 minus 2 minus 3, so they could be plus or minus, because b could be plus or minus. And then inside, we should have whatever b was squared minus 4ac. So here we've got an 8, 8 squared is 64. Here we've got a 6, and 6 squared is not 64. So the others check out. So I think that is the mistake there, is because this is b squared, that must be wrong. So the answer for that would be b. Alright, part B. Here is the graph of a quadratic equation with the form y equals ax squared plus bx minus c. I reckon that might be a typo, it might be plus c. I don't know, I don't know actually, because I've got a minus c there as well. One attempt is the correct, correctly partially evaluated solution of ax squared plus bx minus c equals zero for this equation. Circle the letter of the attempt below. Right, so it's A, B, C, or D again. So you've got to think, well, what's interesting about this quadratic graph? Um, I think what's interesting is it doesn't actually cross the x-axis. So what that must mean is it doesn't have any solutions. So whichever of these ones is correct, is trying to evaluate this, it must be that um, it's one that's going to end up with no solutions. So you've got to look at these and think, well, which one would that be? So with these... Um, quadratic formulas, the kind of important part is this b squared minus 4ac in under the square root, because if that's negative, well you can't have a negative square root, so you'd get, um, you wouldn't be able to get an answer. So the only one where that happens, all of these things under the square root should be positive, apart from at c, where you've got 4 minus 8. So I think that is going to be the wrong one there, so that would be c. Right, question 5. Solve the equation 3x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Give your answers to two decimal places. Now, this, I think, is a clue that this won't factorise, and I jump straight in and use the quadratic formula. So remember, again, that you need to know this by heart. Over 2a. So let's... Our a is 3, our b is 7 and our c is minus 8, so we've got to remember that minus. So we'll have minus 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, which is 49, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times 8, which is minus 8, all over 2a, so all over 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, you could stick all that in your calculator, but I'd just do a bit of working on the discriminant first, just because that's where people can get into trouble. So we've got 49 and then it's minus something. This will be negative because it's a plus times a plus times a minus. So let's work that out. So minus 4 times 3 times minus 8 is 96. So in the square root we've got 49 plus 96 all over 6. So I'm going to put this in my calculator now. So minus 7 plus the square root of 49 plus 96 all over 6. So with the plus, that gives me, so to two decimal places, 0 0.84. And then I'm just going to click through and change the plus to a minus, and I get minus 3.17. Okay. So the bit where people make most mistakes is they either don't have the fraction line going all the way across, so they'll miss out the minus 7, or they mess something up here. Either they miss one of the minuses, or they square a minus number and get a minus. Remember, this b squared will always be positive, or zero. Okay, question six. 
The equation x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0 can be written as x plus 1 all squared minus 9 equals 0. So, in other words, they've just written it in completed square form. And below is a sketch of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. And work out the coordinates of the points a, b, c, and d. So, a and d are the roots, the points where the curve crosses the x-axis. C is the y-intercept, and B is the minimum point. Right, so, um, let's look at the intercepts first. So, A and D, that's going to be the point where um, Y equals 0. So, in other words, the equation equals 0. So, you can use either of these to solve it. So, you could factorise this. So, we want two numbers which add up to 2 and times to give minus 8. So, I reckon plus 4 and minus 2 so we get x equals minus 4 or 2 so a would be the point minus 4 0 d would be the point 2 0 okay point c that's the point where the curve crosses the um, y-axis so some of you might know already that that's just going to be minus 8 because it's the number on its own so where that comes from is on the y-axis, that's the point where x equals 0. So if we make x equals 0, we get 0 squared, which is 0, plus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 8. So we just get minus 8. And actually, this will happen for any quadratic, is these things will be 0, because I've got an x in them, and then you've got a minus 8 on the end. So this is the point 0, minus 8. Right, finally, the point b is the minimum point. So to do that, we have to put the curve in completed square form. So that means a form like this. And then you can read the coordinate off it. So in this, for, in this form, the minimum point will be minus a, b. Now nicely, the question's already given us that. So we know this point will be minus 1, so minus the number in the brackets, minus 9. And then you leave that number on its own. So you might be expected to do that yourself in an exam. OK. Um, just one more thing I wanted to go through. We could have solved this equation to find a and d with this second equation so using the completed square form so it's not just useful finding the minimum point you can also do this so bring the 9 over if we square root we've just got to remember this could be plus or minus the square root of 3 um, sorry the square root of 9 which is 3 so either x plus 1 equals 3 in which case x equals 2 or x plus 1 equals minus 3 in which case x equals minus 4 so you get the same answer Okay, and is that the end? It is. Good. So um, any other requests, let me know, and I hope that was useful.